Welcome physics folk. Today we'll be looking at the DC motors. Before we get into today's video, there are two other videos that are worth watching in preparation. So I recommend you watch my video on magnetic fields to understand the basics and also my video on magnetic force equations, both of which are relevant to a DC motor. Let's get on with today's video. So you'd recall previously, the right hand slap rule, that when a wire with current carrying it is positioned perpendicular to a magnetic field, we can predict the direction of the force with our right hand slap rule. So your thumb is placed in the direction of the current, your fingers are placed in the direction of the magnetic field moving from north to south, and the palm will generate the direction of the force. So in this scenario with a wire, with the current moving into the page, magnetic field going from right to left, we would find that our force is being on the wire is being pushed up the page as predicted by our right hand slap rule. Question, what happens when a current carrying loop is placed within a region of uniform magnetic field. What effect does that have? Let's consider this. Number one, let's identify the polarity of the power supply. So we have our power supply down at the bottom of our diagram here, and we know that the larger terminal is always the positive terminal and the smaller terminal is always the negative. Number two, let's identify the direction of the current through the loop. Most students know that current moves in the external circuit from the positive terminal around back to the negative terminal. So we have our direction of current. Number three, let's apply the right hand slap rule to the side length AB. So I've labeled the corners of our coil, A, B, C, and D. So on length AB, we have a current going into the page, a magnetic field moving to the left. So using our right hand slap rule, we can predict that side length AB will experience a force up the page. Let's apply the same right hand slap rule to the side length CD. We now have current coming out of the page, magnetic field from right to left, and we want to put our thumb out of the screen towards us our fingers moving north to south from right to left, our palm would be pushing down the screen. So in this scenario, we know that the right hand slap rule predicts a force on side length the CD down the page. So in this scenario, we get our maximum force. These forces are maximum when the current in the wire in both length AB and CD are perpendicular to the magnetic field strength. So F max occurs when the current is perpendicular to the magnetic field strength. Now let's have a look at length BC. What happens to this length of wire? It also has current running through it and it's in the presence of a magnetic field. So net force of zero on length BC. And that's because the current running through this wire is parallel to the magnetic field. And that will generate no force whatsoever. So if the coil were free to move, it would rotate around a central axis. So you imagine we have a central axis here. Force on AB is pushing it up. Force on CD is pulling it down. So side length AB and CD would both experience a clockwise rotation from the point of view of the battery. So if I'm viewing from here at the front of this arrangement, I would see this whole armature or coil rotate in a clockwise direction. This is the basis of how a motor works. On one side, we've got an upwards force. On the other side, a downwards force. This generates what we call a torque. Now, a torque is the product of a force being applied at some distance or radius from rotation point. Okay, so here's our dotted line, the center of axis, the rotational axis. So there's a force being applied here on section AB at some radius or distance. And there's a force here applied on length CD at some radius or distance from the central axis. This would be generating a clockwise torque. Let's consider the following situation. Example one, consider the rotation of a single wire loop shown below. So we have a loop with current going in and out. So the coil is horizontal in this position. We just worked out the right hand slap rule would generate an upwards force on this side length. And the right hand slap rule would generate a downwards force on the right hand side of this coil. This would generate a clockwise torque to rotate it if we're viewing from the front. So it would rotate. Now position two, we've had a clockwise rotation of approximately 45 degrees. Again, this top section of the coil is experienced a force up. This bottom section of the coil is experienced a force down. This would still generate a clockwise torque from the front viewpoint. The coil now reaches position three, where the coil is vertical. In this situation, the right hand slap rule on the top side of the coil predicts an upwards force. The right hand slap rule upon the bottom side of the coil predicts a downwards force. When we get those two forces acting, this is not generating a torque whatsoever. This is effectively trying to pull the coil apart. There's a force on the top wire pulling it up and there's a force on the bottom wire pulling it down. It's effectively being stretched. So there's no rotational torque generated here. However, 
Because of the momentum from the previous rotation, we find the coil does in fact maintain a clockwise rotation beyond the vertical into position four. See what happens here though. We still have the current traveling into the page and the magnetic field moving from right to left. So the right hand slap rule generates an upwards force on the top section. On the bottom section, there's a downwards force using the right hand slap rule. Now from this alignment and position of the coil, this generates an anti-clockwise torque from the front viewpoint. This will want to re-establish the coil moving back to the central position in the vertical again. And again, that will simply stretch up and down. We get no torque whatsoever. So with our current arrangement, our coil will rotate from a horizontal alignment up through a vertical, beyond the vertical. But then when it goes beyond vertical, it will be pushed back to this vertical alignment. So how can we maintain a clockwise rotation, or indeed a rotation in one direction. To answer that, let's consider the following DC motor diagram. We have what we call a split ring commutator. There's a ring shape and it's got a split in the middle. Now the commutator reverses the direction of the current in the armature. It does this twice every rotation when the coil is at right angles vertical to the field. It does so to enable the continuous rotation of the coil and armature. We'll look at this in more detail shortly. The brushes. The brushes are made of graphite. Graphite is a great conductor, so it provides electrical contact from the supply into the commutator to the coil. It's also a good lubricant, graphite, so it produces little friction that allows smooth contact between the commutator and the brush. It ensures the supply voltage can enter the coil armature via the commutator. The DC voltage supply. It produces direct current that enables the whole system to work. The armature itself, also known as a coil, can be made of one or more windings. Current passes through the armature which experiences a force due to the magnetic field. It's free to rotate and it does so. And finally, the magnetic field can be made by either permanent magnets or electromagnets. They assist in creating a force upon the coil, or what we call the armature. Let's now look at two online simulations that particularly emphasize how the split ring commutator works to allow the coil or armature to rotate in one direction. Simulator one is using a MagLab simulator and I'd like you to focus on the coil as it rotates. Check out the arrow on this particular section of the coil. Just follow the one that's on the top now and on the bottom now. See how it changes from to the left to the right. Left to the top, right at the bottom. Left to the top, right at the bottom. And in doing so, it's continually rotating the same direction the whole time. This is being achieved by using a split ring commutator. You see the blue side and the red side. So this is, for example, our negative terminal. So the negative is hooked up to the red side, blue side of the commutator, red side, blue side. We are effectively changing the direction of the current within the coil, which enables it to rotate in the one direction only. This is the MagLab simulator. The second simulator is the Walter Fent simulator represents exactly the same scenario. We have here a permanent magnet with a magnetic field coming from the top of the page to the bottom. We have a, an armature or a coil rotating which is connected to a split ring commutator. Okay, one side of the coil is connected to one half and the other is connected to the other. So we have a permanent battery polarity. However, we find that this side, for example, as we follow it along is now connected to the negative battery terminal. And then as it rotates along, it's connected to the positive battery terminal is connected to the negative battery terminal. And so we're changing the direction of the current. Okay, so if we were to re remove everything other than the current, you can see the current will change now. Okay, different direction. This section is going to the right. Now coming to the left and it rotates again. It goes to the right. Now in terms of Lorentz force, which is the interaction between the magnetic field of the wire and that of the permanent magnet, you'll see that enables it using the right hand slap rule to predict it is pushing out towards and then it rotates and at the top it pushes the opposite direction. It enables a continual rotation in one direction, a continual torque in one particular direction and it's all done by this split ring commutator. Let's now also have a look at a section of a video that looks at the construction of a typical DC motor. Let's first start with the simplest DC motor possible. It looks like this. The stator provides a constant magnetic field and the armature, which is the rotating part, is a simple coil. 
The armature is connected to a DC power source through a pair of commutator rings. When the current flows through the coil, an electromagnetic force is induced on it according to the Lorentz law, so the coil will start to rotate. You will notice that as the coil rotates, the commutator rings connect with the power source of opposite polarity. As a result, on the left side of the coil, the electricity will always flow away, and on the right side, electricity will always flow towards. This ensures that the torque action is also in the same direction throughout the motion, so the coil will continue rotating. But, if you observe the torque action on the coil closely, you will notice that, when the coil is nearly perpendicular to the magnetic flux, the torque action nears zero. As a result, there will be irregular motion of the rotor, if you run such a DC motor. Here is the trick to overcoming this problem. Add one more loop to the rotor, with a separate commutator pair for it. In this arrangement, when the first loop is in the vertical position, the second loop will be connected to the power source. So a motive force is always present in the system. Moreover, the more such loops, the smoother will be the motor rotation. Some exam questions. Example 1. A schematic diagram of a simple DC motor is shown below. It consists of two magnets, 1 and 2, a single 9 volt DC power supply, a split ring commutator and a rectangle coil of wire consisting of 10 loops. The total resistance of the coil of wire is 6 ohms. The length of section JK is 12 centimeters and the length of side KL is 6 centimeters. The strength of the uniform magnetic field is 0.5 of a Tesla. Question 1. Determine the size and direction, that is, A to F, of the force acting on the side JK. So here's JK. Current runs from the positive terminal through the brush through the commutator from J through to K. And the magnetic field moves from north to south. So we've got our current going from J to K. It is perpendicular at right angles to the magnetic field. And so JK does experience a force. Let's find that force. Magnetic field strength is 0.5 of a Tesla. The voltage was 9. The resistance in the coil was 6. The number of loops or turns was 10. And the length from J to K is 12 centimeters or 0.12 of a meter. Step 1, let's find the current. I equals V over R from Ohm's law. The voltage was 9. The resistance was 6. That generates a current of 1.5 amps traveling through this coil. Second step, let's find the force. Where F equals N B I L. N, the number of turns was 10. Magnetic field strength was 0.5 Tesla. The current was 1.5 amps as calculated previously in step one, and the length was 0.12 of a meter. That generates a force of 0.90 Newtons. Now we also need to work out what is the direction of the force. So again, you can get your right hand rule out and use your right hand where the thumb goes in the direction of the current, your fingers in the direction of the magnetic field, and the palm will generate the direction of the force. So there's my Hand with my thumb going into the page, my fingers going from left to right, and my palm is pushing down. That would generate a downwards force on JK. So the right-hand slap rule predicts a downwards force. So that was option D. Question 2. What's the size of the force acting on the side KL in the diagram shown? Explain your answer. Well, in this scenario, the current running through KL and the magnetic field strength B are parallel. So there is no force on section KL. When your magnetic field strength and your current are running parallel, there is no force generated. Example 2. Students build a model of a simple DC motor shown below. Question 1. The motor is set with the coil horizontally shown and the power source is supplied. Will the motor rotate in a clockwise direction C or an anti-clockwise A? Explain your answer. So here's our circuit. First of all, from the signs on the terminal with the plus and the minus, we can work out the direction of the conventional current. It runs from the positive terminal in the external circuit through the loop and back around to the negative terminal. The magnetic field is shown in red here from left to right, from north to south. And we want to use our right hand rule to work out the direction of the force on section FE. Here's our FE. So FE, here's our hand. Current is coming out of the page. Magnetic fields from left to right. The hand will predict 
the force on section FE is up the page. And the section HG, got the opposite direction current. It's going down, so our thumb is going into the page, our hand is directing the fingers from north to south, and our palm predicts the direction of the force on that current carrying wire is downwards. So the direction of rotation is clockwise. Left hand side section E to F goes up, right hand side G to H gets pulled down, and we have a clockwise rotation. Question two. One of the students asks, what is the purpose of the commutator? The split ring commutator reverses the direction of the current in the loop twice every rotation. When the loop is perpendicular to the magnetic field, that means it's vertical. This reverses the direction of the two magnetic forces and allows the loop to continue turning in the same direction. Example number three, students build another simple model of a DC motor as shown below. Question one, at what positions A to D, this is a multi-choice question, of the rotating coil is the magnetic force on the side x, y, zero. One or more answers may be selected. Is it A, horizontal with the current as shown left, B, horizontal with the current in the opposite direction to that shown left, C, when it's vertical, and D, at all orientations of the coil. So there's our current traveling, there's our force, they're parallel to one another. So the current through x, y is parallel to the magnetic field B, so the force on section x, y will be zero. So no matter if the current's traveling to the right or the left, it is running parallel to the magnetic field between the two magnetic poles. So sections A and B will both be valid answers. Whilst not VCA approved, some may argue that when the coil is in a vertical orientation, there is a gap within the split ring commutator whereby no current will travel through and therefore no force on the coil as well. So some may argue that option C is also possible. Question two, the students discover that the motor starts moving more easily with the coil in some orientations than in others. Explain the best orientation or orientations for starting the motor to move from rest. So when coil is at a horizontal arrangement, the forces on opposite side of the coil are at right angles to the face of the coil. In this arrangement, the torque or turning effect is a maximum. And finally, question three, to increase the speed of rotation of the motor, the students suggest a number of improvements. Which suggestions, listed here as A to D, is likely to increase the speed of rotation of the coil? One or more answers may be selected. Explain your answers. So A, if you increase the voltage, this produces a greater amount of current. And we know that F is equal to NBIL, or F is proportional to current. So as the voltage goes up, the current goes up, which increases the force and therefore the speed. So option A is one possible method of increasing the speed of rotation. Option B also. F is equal to NBIL. So the force generated by this particular coil is proportional to the number of turns. So if we increase the number of turns, we'll get a greater force and therefore a greater speed. Thank you for watching this video. There's quite a bit to consider when looking at DC motors. However, if you can apply the right hand slap rule correctly and also F equals NBIL, you're pretty much there. If you enjoyed or learned something from this video, please like, share, comment, and don't forget to subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.